Baik. Nak nak try untuk share uh, slide boleh juga. Ah uh, Zoo 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 akan cuba ni. So kalau boleh try movekan ni uh, dia punya page tu boleh try just nak tengok sama ada it is moving Okay, so scroll lah kalau tu. Scroll je boleh zoom. Scroll je ke bawah. Satu-satu. Uh, boleh buat full screen mode kan? Sorry. Macam mana Ifa? Oh. Sorry. Uh, boleh buat full screen mode. Uh -uh. Buka buka tu. Dekat tu zoom. Bawah tu zoom. Bawah read mode tu ada full screen. Yang sebelah kanan tu boleh close yang create PDF ada tu. Uh, ya, ya, tekan button yang ke kanan tu. Uh, yang ah, oh, yang, yang tu atau tu? Arrow, arrow tu. Oh, arrow, arrow tu. Uh. Kat send for comment tu, uh, Zul tekan dekat sebelah tu ada arrow macam kecil tu. Uh, Zul tekan yang tu untuk tutup tu. Uh, ada in between, ada lain kolom yang kecil yang tengah-tengah antara create PDF tu. Sebelah kanan Zu, tengah-tengah Zu create PDF Lepas tu send for comment tu Dia ada satu small arrow kat situ Zu tekan kiri sikit Kiri-kiri Tadi-tadi ah, kiri sikit Kiri sikit je, sikit je Ah tu Yes, alright, thank you Cuba zoom ke bawah kan sikit nak tengok dia besar ke macam mana. Zoom. Uh, move uh, ke bawah. Uh, uh. Untuk uh, yang seterusnya. Uh, yang tadi. Oh, sorry, sorry. I tengah. Ya, yeah, move ke bawah ni sebab dia PDF. So, zoom kena turun. Uh. Okay. Uh, nak besarkan sikit tak? 120 ke? Eh, tak boleh eh. Okay. 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 Bawa lagi. Cuba. Okay lah. Okay lah ni. Okay. Okay. Seratus. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Nice. Dr. Shu boleh sambil-sambil uh, kita start lah kot ya. Hmm, boleh. Saya ha. dah, dah, dah ramai juga ni. Ha, okay ya. Okay. Uh, so Assalamualaikum and good morning uh, to everyone. Uh, our esteemed lecturers, uh, invited speaker and all participants. So welcome to the webinar on research and academic career organized by the Rikan Office Faculty of Accountancy UITM. 
So on behalf of the, of the organizing committee, I would like to send a very warm welcome to all of you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so today's event uh, basically revolves around an exciting theme that is very much relevant to our life as uh, an aspiration as an academic. So therefore, today we have with us a speaker who possess vast knowledge, experience, and also expertise in research and academic. Now, I would like to introduce our guest, our special guest, okay, Yang Berbahagia Professor Dato' Dr. Nur Azizi bin Ismail from University Malaysia, Kelantan. So let me in, uh, share a bit uh, of uh, Prof. Dato' Dr.'s uh, profile. So Yang Berbahagia Prof. Dato' Dr. Nur Azizi is a professor of accounting information systems with a strong academic track record. He has been appointed as a specialist consultant advisor on startup projects and a regular trainer for executive training. So Yang Berbahagia Prof. Dato has also received several awards such as the uh, prestigious Movers and Shakers Award from the Asia HRD Awards and he is also the uh, finalist of the ACEEU Entrepreneurial Leader of the Year Award. Yang Berbahagia Prof. Dato has recently authored two popular books which are I Believe Therefore I Am and also I Am Possible Leading Change. Professor Dato was a former Vice Chancellor of University Malaysia Kelantan and he has successfully transformed UMK from a bottom rank into one of the public universities in the country. He has also served as a Deputy Director General of Higher Education, MOHE, and Deputy Vice Chancellor of UUM. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, with the title of Research and Academic Career, Sharing Experience and Tips to Succeed, please welcome Professor Dato Dr. No Azizi bin Ismail. Prof, the, ses the session is yours. Um. Okay, yeah, um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Uh, selamat pagi, very good morning to everyone. Um, first of all, let me thank the UITM, the organizer, for the invitation to share a little bit of my experience. Um, let's see what. Um, how how it goes basically because um, um, based on the information that I received, most of the I mean all the participants are lecturers, and I presume that um, I assume that most are young lecturers who aspire to be you know successful in in in, in the academic career. So. Um, I, I have uh, a bit of, I think, slightly more than 30 years experience in academic and uh, started with, if, if you go to the next slide, um, it started in October 1992 when I joined UUM as a tutor. Uh, prior to that, I was working as an audit trainee with EY and then uh, somehow you know I attended an interview by UUM without any intention to become an academia you know um, the driving factor is only one at that time because I, I wanted to go to the to the US um, to attend uh, heavy metal concerts which um, Metallica is one of my favorite uh, bands. And then I joined UUM in Sintok, which I've never been to Kedah. But then uh, after about a year or less, I went for my uh, master's degree in the state, the University of Memphis. And then there I took up a new challenge instead of um, doing my master's purely in accounting, I venture into a new discipline 
still in accounting, but uh, specializing in um, computer science, which I took half of my subjects from computer science department. Uh, it is it was a big risk that I took because I have almost zero knowledge in IT, and I learned the um, programming, learning about the databases, networking, etc. Uh, but that actually uh, let me discover um, a new area in accounting, which is accounting information systems. Because at that time, um, the University of Memphis has one um, very renowned professors in accounting information system. And after my um, I graduated in, I think, May 1995. Um, I attended an interview with PwC. Um, and just, just to get the experience of attending the interview there with no intention actually to stay in the state. But uh, based on that experience, I learned that um, even in the 90s, in the US, the, uh, most of the uh, audit firms, especially the big ones, at that time they call it as the big five, they are hiring students from uh, computer science, not only accounting graduates. And they also prefer uh, accounting graduates with uh, computing background. So uh, I got a job, but of course I didn't take it up. Um, I went, because I have to go back to, to, to Malaysia. So when I get back to Malaysia, you know, I have no, still, I have no intention to become a lecturer. It's not something that I want to be. I, you know, I joined UUM because I wanted to go to overseas. That That's the only reason. So I, I remember that I, I submitted, I think a couple of times of resignation later to the Dean. But uh, he persuaded me to stay at least uh, for a few years and try to get uh, the gist of what, what you know, about the, the academic world. So I stayed. Uh, but one thing that I did was when I get back to Malaysia, uh, you know, I proposed to the dean of, uh, you know, I shared with the dean my experience in the state that there's a new field in accounting, which is called as uh, accounting invention system. So I have a good dean and he said that, why don't we design the same programs in Malaysia? So uh, we started uh, designing the uh, Bachelor of Accounting, uh, specializing in information system. And it's, it, it was tough because I, I, I was still very young, I think about 25, 26 at that time. And with another friend who also just came back from the UK, she came back from the UK, also doing a, a master's in accounting and information system from East Angelia or Warwick, I can't remember. So both of us uh, started to design the whole curriculum of the accounting information system. And finally, we get the approval from uh, JPA, MIA, et cetera. Um, that is my, my first experience of, of doing something. Um, we, we call it as, as crazy ideas because even MIA do not see that, cannot see that at that time. And MIA was really against the idea of, of having a new accounting program specializing in technology. Uh, at that young age, I had this, um, you know, opportunity to, to meet um, the president of MIA. I still remember the name at that time was uh, Jit Rahim and then Datu Otan Sri Samad Alias at that time who, uh, you know, the, the president of MIA. But again, um, along the way, you know, uh, since coming back in 95, uh, I tried to find a purpose, whether I want to stay or I want to leave the, the academic. And at the end of the day, you know, at that time, if you want to get confirmation, 
can you go back to the previous slide? Um, you need to do research. If you are a, a graduate, master's graduate from US, you don't have experience doing research because we are not required to do research. You know, only a small project paper. So then I started to learn how to do research from very basic. And because I have to do research in order to get the confirmation. So I did uh, one, my first research way back in 1998. And then uh, I published my first academic paper a year later in 1999. And I find out that it is not that hard, you know, and, and, and I turned the, the hate, I, I call it as, you know, because I don't like being an academic, I turned that into something that, that I love, I like. And at that time, research is, is something a bit alien because very few people who do research in those days, I would say that probably uh, five to 10% only lecturers that do research. And out of those 10%, probably only 5% that publish papers. So as a young lecturer, you know, uh, well, do you want to follow that 95% majority who only teach? Or you go with the crazy, I would say uh, 5%, you know, who do research and, and publish. And luckily, unlike most of my colleagues, I joined that small group and started to do research and things like that and try to, to publish papers. And for your information also, uh, because of my, uh, you know, I, I also have different ideas. Um, and I, I started to um, write and publish my research work in uh, professional magazines since the early days. In fact, I, I published my, my first research in, at that time, they call it Accountant National, uh, a magazine uh, uh, published by MIA, which now they call it as Accountants Today. So I think I'm one of the very few academics that really, uh, that, that published in Accountant National at that time. And from there, um, actually by writing, by publishing those short papers in professional magazines, you are building up your network with the accountants out there, not just uh, the academician inside uh, the, the university. So I got uh, the, the first taste of interacting with the, uh, the real accountants out there. So that is very interesting because um, unlike the academic paper that you publish in academic journal, people only cite you. But if you publish in professional magazines, you have to give your email address. And if the readers do not like your ideas, they will email you and say something. And if they like it, they will, of course, compliment you. But you know, you, you got the immediate input almost immediately, say, um, just about one week after that publication, you will start receiving emails. So um, that is one of the, I think, uh, early experience that, uh, you know, I got um, as an academic. So if you go to the next slide. Okay, you know, once I find the purpose, okay, now I decided that I want to stay as an academic. You know, there's no more issue that I'm going to resign and join the corporate world. Um, so you, you have, you know, it, it is about once you, you love what you are doing, you have the patience and, and you have to go all out in, 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 in whatever that you do. In my case, in our case as an academic. So the next stage is about the, the building the confidence. You know, I, I, I was a very introvert person because, uh, you know, I grew up in a small village, you know, um, you know, <laughs> so shy and so scared to talk and things like that. But then uh, I was given uh, my first administrative job about three, four years after I came back with my, my master's degree. 
as the um, apa ni dipanggil uh, pengurusi program for the new program Bachelor of Accounting Information System and holding that position I have the responsibility to get the accreditation from J, uh, not just JPA but also from uh, not KPT but also from MIA kalau tak dia tak ada iktiraf dan sebagainya that's when we I had the experience of this negotiation process with the MIA you know interacting with the president and things like that so that that kind of like give you some maturity from the the early years okay and 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 then um, because we do not have people who can teach accounting information system at that time you know only me and uh, one of my friend but then my friend left UUM to join a uh, private university in KL so I'm the only one who specialize in accounting information system at that time so I was required uh, asked to teach MBA or a master's degree you know I'm not even 30 years old at that time probably 28 or 29 and I had to teach uh, matured students and most of our postgraduate students are from the industry so that that gives you another uh, exposure that build up your confidence as as a lecturer you know um, and then in 2001 uh, i was given another job as the director of institute for accounting studies uh, my role was to collaborate with the uh, government agencies and 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 accountants out there from the industry so it, it, it gave me the taste of what the the practice is you know which is uh, a bit different from 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 the academic world so you know that's what I, I put it as looking outside the window of the academic world and and get into the practical world but but that uh, task was shortened because I had to um, further my study. I went for my PhD in two thousand one. I think in 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 September uh, two thousand one. If you go to the next slide, <clears throat> uh, I, I I put it as taking a break, which is not actually a break because um, you know I, I when I landed in the UK, it was like um a week after the september 11 if you remember you know uh, and the sentiment at that time was very very bad uh, towards the muslims so but that that is okay um and i did my my phd um in accounting information system which is not not easy i, I have to say because um, you have to read twice. You have to work double. You know, you have to read the accounting literature, and at the same time, you have to read the information system literature. And but then, I think with the the strong patience that you have towards what you are doing, um, I managed to to graduate in less than three years, and then. Uh, went back to to malaysia okay in i think august 2004 um then if you go to the next slide um in january 2005 just a couple of months after i came back i was given a new job as the head of department for audit and information systems but um which is um you know, I, I gladly took that uh, task and tried to to do my best. But one thing that I, I, I want to share with you guys is that um, in 2005, I took another challenge. You know, I attended um, a training session with SAS. Okay, may, many of you may know SAS as one of the statistical software 
you know, other than SPSS, we have SAS. But SAS is actually not just a statistical uh, software, but it is what we call a business intelligence software. There are many other softwares that you can explore. And we also use that software for audit purposes, for information system audit. So I was sent by my uh, dean to attend the course, uh, three of us. Um, and then I, I came back, you know, you, when you attended uh, a course for just a few days, I think, uh, I, I can't remember the day, uh, how many days, but I think it's about four or five days. It, it will make you uh, an expert, you know, so um, I wanted to, to re-attend the, the same um, course, but um, the dean did not allow. So I went to negotiate with the SAS management. So the deal is very simple. I said that I wanted to attend your course again, but I don't have the money to pay for the course fee, which is quite expensive. But the deal is that if I, you know, I took the course and then I took the exam, if I pass, can I be your trainer, one of your trainers? Uh, and then um, how I pay back is that by giving the training for free until I, you know, I think I have to give like one and a half training session with SAS um, to cover back the, the cost of the training uh, session. But, but then um, he opened up, um, I learned a new thing. You know, by by being or attached to SAS because SAS is at that time was the leader, this uh, world leader in business intelligence. So they they have big clients. You know, in Malaysia, most of the clients are multinational companies, uh, GLCs, and some government agencies. So I, I engage with SAS as the trainer, come the consultant for three years, from 2005 until 2008. And that process uh, exposed me to the new world, you know, um, where I discover many things and give me a new perspective and, and better understand uh, the, the industry, you know, and where we can bridge the gap between academic and, and industry. One thing that I learned is that, you know, um, when I give uh, a training on activity-based activity management, which is actually activity-based costing, you know, kita kalau in accounting, we have that topic, right? Uh, I discovered that um, what we teach in the university is kind of like wrong compared to what the student need to know if they join the industry. Because our emphasis at the university is so much on the calculation part. At that time, I don't know now because I haven't teach, <laughs> I've not taught accounting for some time now, maybe more than 10, 15 years. But I discovered at that time that, uh, you know, when you teach an activity-based costing, for example, um, you teach and you test students on the calculation part. But in the real world, that calculation part has been taken over by computer. What we need to teach is to come up with the business model, the conceptual model of the ABC model. You know, and when, you know, the thing is that if we focus on the calculation, student may be able to answer that, but that is not needed. In the real world, when they go to the real world, they fail to come up with the, the right ABC model. Jadinya, uh, when I came back to UUM, I shared with my friends that, hey, we are teaching uh, not the right thing. So I gave a uh, few series of training to my colleagues. Uh, to make sure that uh, everyone are uh, you know aware of what what's happening in, in the outside world so my my suggestion is that if you are young lecturers you need to go out 
meet the industry people, get that exposure because that will enhance your experience, your perspective, your understanding of the real world so that you can teach your student better and prepare them better before they join the workforce. So, tapi nak benda ni, it requires your personal effort, I would say. You know, uh, even if the faculty does not, did not support me and then I, I make my own initiative to, to negotiate with the company, you know, and throughout that uh, three years I worked with SAS, you know, I was exposed to, I think about 12 or 13 companies real companies, MNCs, GLCs, and some uh, government agencies. Uh, I give you one example is that I, we work with uh, OCBC Bank. We also work with Petronas. We also work with uh, Bintu Luport, which is uh, Labuhan. Do. And then, uh, so, I, you know, during that time, it's not just about that company, but the industry that you're being exposed. Macam Bintulu Port, you, you have to understand how the port operated. You know, and when you do with OCBC Bank, you have to understand the banking industry. And when you work with uh, Petronas, you have to understand the oil and gas, ONG. And then when we work with uh, telecom, yeah, you have to understand the telecommunication industry. Same, uh, another two, I think uh, we also work with IJN, trying to come up with um, a model for IJN to just to get the, the cost of doing certain type of operations. Um, similarly, when we did with, uh, I think, Subang Jaya Medical Center, now they call it Gatri, I think, they have, uh, uh, because uh, Gatri acquired that. So that, that exposure enrich your understanding so that you can be a better lecturer when you uh, engage with your student. And at the same time, you can be a better, um, a better, what we call it, um, a better researcher that um, your research will be more relevant to the, to the industry. Okay. <clears throat> So, and during those years, uh, I would call it as the most productive years from 2005 to 2009. Okay, and uh, let, let's go to the next slide. May, may I know how, how many participants now attending the... Um, there are forty one, twelve. Okay, what? Uh, <laughs> some I I'm I, I'm worried that I'm I'm talking to ghosts. <laughs> but anyway, um, you can interrupt me. Anyone can interrupt me at, at any time if you have any question. All right, sure, bro. If, yeah. Kalau tak ada, then I will just proceed and we reserve towards the end of it uh, for Q and A. Okay. Okay, and then. Uh, I was given a new responsibility, you know, during those 2005 to 2008, it was busy years, productive but busy years, because you have to teach, you have to do research, you have to publish, and you also working with the industry, you know, as a part time. But being a young lecturer, I was in my mid 30s at that time, you know. Um, how we manage the time. You learn how to manage your, your time. And, but the best part of it is, is your, your networking with the, the industry. Okay, and then in uh, January 2009, I was appointed as the Dean for Research and Postgraduate Studies at the College of Business. And then January 2011, I was appointed as the founding dean for OYA Graduate School of Business. And, you know, being an accountant uh, from my accounting background, I have almost zero management leadership skills. 
you know uh, and that time there's no a cap there's no nothing nobody train you to become a dean so but you, you have to 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 really work hard um, to learn to read books to ask people and i was lucky because uh, during those 2005 to 2008 i already built up uh, quite a good corporate networks and i learned about uh, leadership management and some negotiation skills one thing that uh i want to share with you is the one, one another crazy ideas that uh we came up um you know the first one is the to introduce bachelor of accounting information system the second one is you know uh, it started in 2009 i was invited by this one association they call it as IAJBS by my friend in Manila, uh, International Association of Jesuit Business School. Ini satu persatuan um, whereby the business schools uh, they they follow the Jesus principle. They call it a Jesuit principle. Christian punya business school lah. Okay, so I I was uh, invited to attend their convention at that time they they held in was held in Manila, um, whereby I think almost one hundred business school from all over the world, as far as Peru in South America, attended that convention, and I was the only Muslim. In that uh, young peserta yang had I think close to three hundred. And I attended that uh, convention for three days, observing, talking to them. I said that, wow, uh, these people, they punya ukhwah dia tu, very strong. And they are supported by uh, many companies that are supporting this, what we, they call it as the Jesuit principle. You can actually Google it, IAGBS. I think they, they still exist until now. So... I, I I came back uh, to 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 Kedah, and then I started reading about. I started reading the OIC annual economic reports out of curiosity. You know, I find out that um, we in the Muslim world is 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 very far behind in terms of education, in terms of. Uh, economy in terms of science in terms of technology so i read um, that oic annual report you can get it if you want from uh, they call it accessory s-e-s-r-i-c you can uh, download the report and try to understand the position of 57 oic countries where we are in terms of uh, scientific research, in terms of patterns, in terms of technology export and everything. So I I had this one stupid idea. I said that I, I, I want to create something like IAGBS. And then I started contacting uh, some of my friends from few countries. Can we set up one association, which we call WAIT? World Association of Business School in Islamic Countries. That, that, that is the I. So we launched that in uh, June 2012, officiated by Tun Mahade. Um, I never met Tun Mahade. Um, but why Tun? Why, why we have to get Tun? Not the Minister of Education and not other ministers and not the Prime Minister because um, whether you like Tun or not, I'm not his fan. But we know that Tun can pull the crowd from OIC countries. You know, uh, we, when you mention Tun, that people will come. So we had that in Langkawi in June 2012. Tun came and we had like uh, 250 participants from 38 countries. Um, we tried to, to, to emulate what IAJBS was doing at that time. But then, you know, um, I was the first secretary general of WAIT. At the time, I was a dean of the graduate school. And we had to work this. And through that process, I learned a lot about 
OIC countries? Why about Muslim countries? What are the challenges and things like that? We always like to fight. You know, even our first meeting in 2012, after the convention, our first convention, um, Qatar, Saudi, our co-founders are is Qatar, Saudi, uh, Indonesia, I think uh, Nigeria from representing Africa, another one, I think Indonesia, you know, um, but, but that process, I'm, I'm not going to go into detail, but uh, it is a process that mature you as a person, understand, understand the, the worldview and things like that. And at the same time, you are, it gives you the opportunity to build the global networks from various countries, especially the OIC countries. And then, uh, why is that this current? Because we disband that. Uh, we managed to organize four conventions. Uh, the second one was in Madina. Um, we worked with the Madina Knowledge Economic City where Muhammad Salman was the governor at that time, governor of Madina. Uh, it was fully sponsored and then we had another one in KL and the last one was in Bandung, Indonesia. But then uh, I was, when I was appointed as the uh, TNC, said Asibo, uh, and I give it to the, the Dean of Graduate School to proceed, but due to some reasons, it became inactive. But despite the failure, you learn a lot from that process. I mean, uh, you, you, what I, I want to share with you is that as an academic, yes, we are small. I'm just a, a young dean at that time, the youngest dean at UM, UUM at that time. But you need to have a, a, a vision, something big. You have to dream big. Doesn't matter if it fail, but you you will learn something. Okay. Um, then let let's go to the next slide. Okay. Uh, and in August twenty fifteen, uh, I was promoted to DVC. Um, taking care of research and innovation. Uh, you need to play skate. Uh, TNC PNI juga cover semua lah under. Under the sun, they cover except uh, student and academic. Itu pun postgraduate is under TNC PNI. So yeah, you have to take care of the postgraduate. You have to take care of research and innovation. You have to take care of the computer, you know, IT, pembangunan, semua semua kebala lah. And then we came up with a, a blueprint at that time because we call it, RISE is research, innovation, commercialization, and entrepreneurship. We want to uh, put UUM onto the world map. And uh, so within a short time, I think less than two years, I was the TNC. And then uh, I joined uh, Mohi, uh, take up another challenge. Uh, at that time, uh, it was during and it was under Tan Sri Idris Jusso as the minister. And January 2019, I became the VC of UMK, a very challenging uh, experience because UMK was ranked last. So it was, but I came from the ministry. I know that of all the KPI, most of the KPIs, we were either at number 19 or number 20 last. So we did the transformation and Alhamdulillah, UMK is no longer in the bottom 10. We are in the top 10 of the many KPIs given by the ministry. So, tapi kita tak, tak payah cerita panjang lah itu. Okay, um, next. Apa benda yang lupa dah saya. Okay. Cerita pasal rezeki. Um, ni ramai yang, yang nak tahu nak naik pangkat dan sebagainya kan. Even at UMK, UUM. Um, many young lecturers came to me asking advice on macam mana nak jadi ahli akademik yang berjaya. But unfortunately, how we define berjaya itu dengan pangkat. I I don't see it that way. 
you know, berjaya does not mean um, you naik pangkat, you berjaya. Because um, being an academic, we have a purpose. The purpose is to make our student be somebody. And if you do research, it has to have the impact. Not just you do research for promotion, not just you do research for publication, but you do it because that's something that you want to solve. Okay. Um, and then uh, when you publish, you know, uh, people just publish now. I, I, I want to um, share a little bit that people uh, sometimes the young ones kind of like abuse the thing, you know. I was lucky because at that time there's no ranking and rating. And when I first published, there's no such thing as Corpus WOS, you know. But whenever we, we publish, we want to publish in a good journal in our discipline, irrespective of Scopus or WOS. It only came into the picture, I think, in uh, 2003, 4, 5. You know, but then, uh, and my first Scopus was in 2005. I don't know that when I publish it, you know, whether it's Scopus or not, but it is the best journal in my discipline, International Journal of Accounting Information System. Okay, and what worries me is that uh, the paid journal. Kadang-kadang, dulu kita publish, dua, tiga orang saja. Kadang-kadang, you are sole author, or you just dua orang, tiga orang. But now, you can see that even in social science, there are tujuh, lapan, sembilan, sepuluh authors. Which I later find out that why there are so many authors. Because you are using it as... Uh, a tactic to get it published. Kalau kena bayar 8,000, ada 8 orang, 1,000 ringgit seorang. Itu berlaku. Uh, because your aim is, you just want to publish so that you get promoted. You don't care about other things. You know, which I have mentioned earlier. You know, go out, meet the industry, do good research, publish. Not just academic uh, journals, but you need to publish to the professional magazines as well. Go out and, and become a speaker, not just academic conference, but the corporate events. I I, I joined the corporate events since my, my young days, being invited as a panelist ke, jadi apa ke. Kan? Jadi, nak balik kepada itu, so, I, I remember that uh, one very senior, uh, one of my sifu lah, I would say that, as you see, you just do your work well. The reward will come naturally. Don't chase that. Jadi, saya nak cerita satu lah. Saya tulis kat situ, 2002, that's a little hiccup. Dulu tak ada pencerah kanan kan? Uh, dia pencerah 45, then you naik Madia. There, there's no uh, apa ni pencerah kanan. Um, at that time, uh, I, I went for my PhD in 2001. And then I came back for data collection in 2002. And uh, the dean came to me and said that, Azizi, can I have your CV? Dia kata, saya banyak buat research dengan menulis. Dia pun, saya pun bagilah my CV kat dia. And said that you are more than qualified to apply for associate professor. So, saya pun apply lah atas saranan dia. I apply for AP. Masa tu saya tengah, tengah buat PhD lah. Um... And then after submitting that, uh, I went back to to the UK to finish my 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 thesis. Minggu depan keluar paper. Uh, beberapa staff dia naikkan pangkat ke Prof Madia. Termasuklah saya. So I was so happy. But then when I received the letter, uh, the letter said that tertakluk kepada you dapat PhD. So I said, wow. Okay, dapat naik madia, tapi tertakluk lulus PhD. So, I have to wait for another years lah. For, for another two years. But a few of my friends who are close to the VC at that time, dia dapat surat juga, dapat naik madia um, dengan syarat mendaftar PhD. Kita kena lulus, dia kena mendaftar. 
So yeah, dalam hati you as eh, this is not fair. Uh, and in fact, uh, I think uh, my my performance was was far higher than than them. But doesn't matter. Saya tanya uh, one day the VC came to the UK. Uh, he he stopped by my house and I said, "Datuk, kenapa letak syarat macam ni kat saya? Orang lain macam ni." And he said that I want you to finish your PhD as soon as possible. Saya pun terdiam lah. Kita tak apalah. So I just continue my work and Alhamdulillah I, I, I completed my PhD in less than three years and when I get back in I think August 2004 saya dapat lama dia. Okay. And then I, I continue doing my, my work. You know 2005 to 2009 was very very productive. I work with industry, I do research dan sebagainya. And then the same dean came to me again. Izzy, kau mohon professor? I said, saya, saya, tak, saya tak pernah update my CV. I, I just crazy doing my job. And then I said, kau, kau cuba buat um, your, you know, update your CV and then give it to me. So, dia, eh, dia kata, Izzy, kau ni dah daripada minimum requirement, you are three times higher. Submit. Dia kata, saya pun, kita nak sibuk, kita tak submit. And then a month after that, dia datang, dia marah saya, dia kata, kau kena submit. So, I, I submitted my, my, my tu, masa tu 2008 lah, I submitted my professorship. Alhamdulillah, saya seorang je daripada lima orang yang submit, yang yang di interview, saya, saya lepas lah. So, what I'm trying to say is that, uh, masa nak dapat AP susah, ada syarat macam-macam, tapi Allah permudahkan untuk uh, dapat uh, professor. So I, at that time I was the youngest lah professor di UUM at the age of I think 39 gitulah. And then nine years later, I was promoted to B lah. And then uh, bila saya jadi VC UU, uh, UMK, I minta tukar hakiki lah from UUM into UMK. Saya tak minta naik A pun. Saya minta tukar hakiki and the board based on the uh, performance setahun lebih sebagai VC, they recommended, uh, awarded the the A lah. So Alhamdulillah. So yang saya nak cerita balik pada ni ialah kita kadang-kadang dalam kita hidup tak boleh nak mengejar pangkat sajalah. Kalau kita put that as our main intention, then you get frustrated, then you become angry you get stressful um, dan sebagainya and dan saya simple saja uh, when i came to umk first i was offered by transfer idris yusof azizi can you go to umk be the vc i said no saya tak nak pun uh, because i said that uh, umk is tempat macam gym tendang sikit lah. Um, because I know that we are monitoring. Semasa tu saya TKP, DKPT, saya jaga 20 universiti awam. So I know the, 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 the issues, the performance of every university. I said that uh, I'm not that strong to go to UMK. But then when the government change, uh, masa tu Dr. YB Dr. Mazli came to call me to his office and said that I want you to go to UMK. It's not negotiation, uh, you have to go. Because he terminated my service as TKP. So either I go back to UUM or I take up the challenge to go to UMK. So I took that challenge. Uh, I did all my best. Um, but to do the right thing, ini pun saya nak cerita ni juga lah. I mean, uh, it's not easy in our part of the world, especially in Muslim countries. If you want to enforce the governance integrity, people will get rid of you. And I know that if what I'm doing, uh, I might risk of being that. And it happened. It happened. But I, I'm proud. I'm still proud of myself. Uh, saya bukan nak cerita saya ni macam mana. But uh, we as a human, we have to stand on our principle. Uh, we must put integrity in the first place. Kerana power and position is just temporary. They can take back, but they can never take your professorship. And then untuk dapat profesor ni, you know, profesor ke profesor Madia, let you deserve to be, to get one. You know, uh, jangan, kadang-kadang saya jumpa ramai orang yang, yang datang mengadu. Dia kata dia dah layak. Dia dah layak. Dia cukup je. 
layak untuk memohon. Ha, tapi kalau boleh, saya pengalaman saya lah, tak ada siapa komiti yang akan tolak kalau you ni memang betul-betul layak. Macam saya cerita tadi, uh, dekan saya terkejut at that time dengan um, dengan apa ni syarat-syarat pada ketika itu he said that you are already three times the minimum requirement so nobody can say no to you kan jadi kita kena sebagai orang Islam ni kena kena percayalah bahawa rezeki itu uh, milik 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 Tuhan lah dan saya nak balik let's go to the uh, second last slide um dekat ke sebelah dah okey There are two lessons that uh, that I can share with you. <coughs> Yang pertama dalam konteks akademik, kenapa saya asingkan teaching? Teaching is the core, is our core business. Okay. Yang lain itu, apa pun yang kita buat, sama ada research, publication, consultation, training, community, admin work, should enrich our teaching capacity and capability. Dia tak boleh. Uh, you don't do research just for naik pangkat. You do research, you learn new things. And you can share back with your student. If you publish, you learn new things. Sama ada you publish dalam academic journal atau professional journal, the feedback that you get, meaning you learn something new. Kalau dia tak boleh pulang balik kepada pelajar dalam bentuk teaching, to me is useless. Sama juga dengan you buat consultation work. Saya banyak juga consultation work. Even now, I'm, I'm once in a while, I engage in consulting job with the consultant out there, consulting firm. So, whatever that you learn, macam contoh paling mudah, last year I engage for six months with one uh, company. I learn about SWOT analysis, about TAUS. Kita mengajar selama ni. Tapi kita cannot relate to the real practice, the real world. How does, nampak mudah benda tu. Tapi with the implementation, it's, it's not that easy. So we learn that now, when I teach my MBA, I think I can teach them better. Sama juga when you do training. So, saya banyak buat training. I invited as a trainer. And that experience has to give go back to the student sama juga bila you buat community services admin so kat situ dia punya purpose tu kena betul nah, the whole process kat tadi semua yang tadi dia harus bawa balik kepada teaching kalau kita banyak buat research we ignore teaching mati kita nak menjawab seriously i'm not joking Kan, sampai kita mengabaikan tanggungjawab kita mengajar kerana kita terlalu mengejar research, kita terlalu mengejar publication. Kenapa kita terlalu mengejar? Nak naik pangkat. Sebagai contohnya. If you continuously doing it, you'll be fine. Saya bukan orang yang publish 5, 10 tahun. No. But I did that consistently. Kalau ambil scopus macam tu, you can check my scopus. Tak banyak macam orang pun. Tapi setiap tahun daripada 2005 sampai 2023, I never miss. Sentiasa ada. Tak banyak pun satu. Dua. Paling banyak empat saja. But when you do it consistently and you publish in in a group journal, you get the citation. Kadang-kadang kita terlalu mengejar. Banyak ni yang minta naik pangkat. Saya dah, dah tengok bila saya jadi penilai. Berpuluh-puluh. Citation ciput. The average citation is less than one. What what does that mean? It, it means that the quality of your work is not there. Dan, dan sebagainya lah. So, balik pada sini. That, uh, and you tengok dalam box, so academic and practice. We need to get the, the practical experience as well. Then, baru kita boleh mengajar dengan, dengan baik. Okay, last slide. I think, next. Okay. Dari segi life lesson, kalau you perasan lah masa saya uh, bincang daripada awal tu kan, I'm talking, actually I'm talking about purpose, finding purpose. Once you find that purpose, you know, then you takkan larilah daripada uh, 
you, you are not going to cross the line. The second one is about patience. You must have patience in whatever that you do. You need to always work the extra when you have the patience. And perseverance, persistence, and you must have the bravery. Ini yang ramai tak ada. Saya daripada saya muda lagi, kalau rekan tak betul, saya akan pergi jumpa dia. I always come up with alternative solutions, um, alternative suggestions on how to to make things better. So yang muda-muda ni jangan takut lah because yang saya perhati kalau dalam ekonomi kita tu, tamu orang kita ni, the fidelistic mindset is, is still very very strong. Kan? Kalau bos tak boleh nak tegur, yang bawah pula takut, lalang kau bodek je kerja. Kan? Um, itu tak boleh lah. Uh, if you have to speak up, you have to speak up. Kalau you tak berani, macam saya cakap, I'm a very very, apa ni, very shy, very apa ni. But you have to learn how how, how to speak and stand up for what is right. And integrity is is the most important thing. And humbleness. Tengah tu bila dah naik pangkat sikit, baru Profesor Madia tak panggil Prof dia marah. Memang kau bukan profesor pun. Contohnya ada ni. Ini this is the true story. Kan? Bila you, you dah sombong. Kalau you ada PhD. Tak panggil doktor pun nak marah. I mean. Bila kita sombong. Kita rasa kita hebat. Kita. Dia dia akan tutup. Kita punya keinginan untuk belajar lebih tinggi. Untuk, untuk belajar lagi. Sedangkan ilmu yang kita ada tu. Sebenarnya sangat-sangat kecil. And so I always open my mind to meet people. I read lots of books. Saya bagi tahu kadang-kadang orang akademik itu masalahnya dia hanya baca jurnal. They don't read books. If you don't read books, saya kalau dalam ekap panggil saya saya cakap kalau tak baca 15 20 biji buku setahun. Selain daripada buku teks, buku jurnal tu, you you are not ready to become an, a good leader lah. And and I just, to end, I, I want to quote what Rumi said. When you do things from your soul, you feel the river moving in you. So, so that is a very powerful quote. Lah. Saya rasa dah tak ada slide kan? That's the last one. Okay. So exactly one hour. So saya rasa my mind I plan for one hour. Uh, I, I would um, prefer to to take questions from you lah daripada duk cakap seorang-seorang ni risau pula aku dah, dah muka tak nampak okay so I, I I hand it over back to the moderator lah alright thank you so much prof uh, so I think it is uh, indeed a very positive encouragement from you so okay ladies and gentlemen we will now open this session for questions uh, if uh, you have any question or you have something that you'd like to share, you may use the chat and also the Q&A features on Webex uh, to ask your questions, yeah? And we will, inshallah, get uh, all the questions answered. So, silakan. Sekiranya ada soalan. Ada yang kat tangan tadi. Nurul. Ada yang kat tangan, sorry. Tadi. Dah hilang dah tangan dia. <laughs> So does any of you have any question? Uh, no, oh, so Nuru Ezawati uh, said, Bravo, Prof, a very good session. Okay, any question from the participants? Okay, Prof, so I think while waiting for them to ask, so I basically have one question lah, so that, that, that I would like to ask. Eh? Mm. Um, so of course, uh, we as an academic, um, so as we do our, our our job, so there will be time uh, that that we need to deal with, um, for example, rejection. Like you said, uh, you said, uh, that's a hiccup. That's a, a a disappointment. So how do you basically uh, respond to this situation? So how do you how do you limit it uh, from uh, moving forward uh, move forward and from advancing your your career goals? Lah? So how how do you deal with it? Um, I, I think you need to be persistent. That, 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 that is the key word. And that persistence and perseverance comes if you have the patience. 
um, let, let, let me share with you. Um, if you remember that um, I shared that I negotiated with SAS, you know, to let me attend the training for free. Uh -oh. I actually I attended not just one, I attended three free trainings by SAS. And uh, the deal is, you know, how I'm going to pay back. It's not going to be, you know, totally free. He said that, okay, uh, we can, uh, saya ingat lagi masa tu, dia punya regional manager said, okay, we allow you to attend and we're going to test you. If you are good, if you are qualified, we're going to appoint you as a certified trainer, come consultant. And when you do uh, the job for us, we're going to deduct that fee from you. So I biasa the first two training yang I bagi untuk bagi pihak SAS, I tak dapat satu sen pun. But because I I I want to learn about it. Mm. Three of us actually. Uh, three of us attended the training. Dua tak nak, dia kata susah lah apa semua. Mm. Saya balik, saya ingat I spend uh, after the first training, I get back to your MK, I spend three months every night, two or three hours. Tiap malam. Sebab petang kita, saya, saya, kita sibuk dengan benda lain. So after Isha or after Maghrib, I will spend another two, three hours working on the software to make sure that I really understand it. Yeah. So that, that is patient. Mm -hmm. And that persistent is bila, bila your boss kata no, SAS pun mula-mula kata no, but I, I try to negotiate it. Uh, sama juga dengan bila saya jadi dekan, it's so funny, you know, I, I, I was uh, the youngest dean at that time. And nobody put hope on you. Hmm. I, I, I was a very, orang kenal saya ni, kadang-kadang nanti, saya tak pandai menyemat lah. No. I am not the type that would wear long suit, coat dan sebagainya. Kadang-kadang <coughs> stokin tak pakai. <coughs> but then when you give me the task, hmm. I still remember that the VC at that time, ketika ICC, UUM is so big, it's like a cruise ship. We are slow. So we need a speedboat. So we he created Oya GSB as the speedboat and you are the flight bearer for that. So so as a graduate school of business, the key word is being relevant. So you have no choice but to work with the industry. I want to tell you that this is, you know what? I go and knock the door of about 20 CEOs. As a, as a young dean, I, I don't look like a professor, pun walaupun saya dah, dah professor masa tu. Um, I just knock and, and some of the CEO said, they are so arrogant. I, I can tell you that. They reject you. I, I remember the, this one very big GLC said that, can you do something like Harvard or yes. IMD? I said, of course not. Yes. But you can help us be one. So, you know, that rejection uh, teach you something. Okay, saya ni, I mean, kalau saya buat kita kerja dah. Okay, kalau kena reject, saya, uh, saya tak ada dah kecewa sangat. Saya balik, saya kata, what's wrong with that paper? How can I make it better? I, I akan put up balik. Saya akan submit balik sampai lulus. Confirm akan lulus. Yeah, ya, yeah. I mean, kadang-kadang bila you tak dapat naik pangkat. Hey, maknanya kita tak qualified lagi lah. Contohnya, you, you just go back and, and keep on on working. Mm -hmm. and, you know, kalau tak, susah kita. Itu je secara ringkas lah, you know, based on my my own experience. Uh, especially orang kita lah, orang kita dia terlalu sensitif, cepat. Mm -hmm. Cepat give up, cepat kecil hati, cepat ini. Ha, kalau kerja dengan saya, susah tu kering-kering cakap Pak Kiyati ni. Because I'm a very straightforward person, I will tell you directly on your face what's oh. wrong. Okay. And, okay. Okay. So, these are two two important points highlighted by Prof. So, you need to have the passion and also uh, perseverance lah. Yeah, basically. So, we have uh, three questions, Prof. Uh, yeah. for now. Okay, so, I have a question also. Oh, okay, yes, yes, please. Uh, Dr. Nazmul. Okay. Uh, should I continue question? Ah uh, yes yes yes. Okay, you thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you, Prof, for your very experienced and motivated speech. Uh, we really motivated ourselves. Uh, one of my question is, Prof, um, 
for publication strategy, um, so uh, for example, if I want to publish this year five articles and in good journal, mm. how would be my strategy? Should I have to plan one year before or same year? Mm -mm. Uh, please, uh, I mean, just share your experience so we can be motivated by your experience. Thank yeah. you, Prof. Okay, yeah. publication. How do you manage, Prof? Um, you know, first, I think when, when during those days when I was very active in publication, you know, I was, you know, our, our intention is that we want to publish in in a very good journal in our discipline. So you know that what what are the journals that you you, you aim to publish. Um, and second, when you do it. In every journal has a different way of writing styles. Even kalau you tengok antara Emerald dengan apa tu lagi satu tu, Elsevier, that that's a different format, and the approach is also different. So you have to learn that you know the strategy to publish in that in that particular journal, and then most of the good journals. Um, it will take time to publish. I, I can tell you that uh, the most satisfaction that I get is when I publish in International Journal of Accounting Information System, even though it took me more than two years to get it published. Okay. Very more long. Than, yeah, two, more than two years and empat kali pergi balik. You know, back and forth. The finally, after the fourth time, it is finally accepted. And you have to address each and every comments. I, I remember that the first draft I received forty three comments. You know, and I co published with my supervisor. I said that I, I you know, I, I want to to give up. There's too many comments, and and my supervisor told me that um, Azizi, that you, you already half of your leg. You know, to be accepted with major correction is is already good so i learned from him how to address each and every comments you need patience you need perseverance in, in doing that so if you want to publish in that type of journal then you have to plan your time because you will take if you are lucky one one year or one and a half if you are less lucky two years so if you want to publish five in that type of journal then you have to plan for it, you know, uh, because, you know, th those paid journal, I, I, I didn't take into account those paid journal because it's my own paper. I never once published in a paid journal. Sure. I had a few that, that my student put my name in that, you know, um, but, you know, those days, you know, even now, I, you know, we, I, I try to avoid publishing in, in paid journal, which is faster. Mm -hmm. uh, you can publish it in just a couple of months. They don't really go through the rigorous process. You may use that, you know, uh, in, in, because even Scopus Index Journal are not all in that Corpus Journal are good journals. You have to know what you want in your life and you have to plan for it. So to answer the yes and no of it, you know, it depends what you want. You know, I, I still wonder how people publish 10, 15. I have seen that people publish 20 in a year. So my first question is, what is the basis of your publication? What, from which research? Because normally that publisher come from, from research, but some people, they publish without doing any research. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I don't understand the, the, the new academy world, to, to be honest with you. Um, because I never aim to publish more. I only publish once, four in a year, only once. The rest, on average, two. But I did it consistently over the years because it, it never come to my intention that I, I want to chase the pankat, you know, to get promoted as fast as possible. I'm just doing it because I love doing it. Yeah. And yeah, so I, I hope I, I answer your question. Okay, all right. Thank you, Prof, for that. All right, so we have a question from Dr. Mutia. 
So how do you basically maintain your passion, Prof, despite people criticizing you? So like you said, normal. you want to follow that 95% or you want to be the opposite of 5%. So people will surely criticize you. So how do you maintain your passion? Just ignore them. I, you know, you, you, you lead your life. You know what you want. You know, um, I, I always like that. I, I don't really bother what people say about me. As long as I feel that is the right thing to do, then I, I'll just do it. Um, you know, um, even when I, the, one of the biggest challenge was when, when I was Dean of OYA, you know, at that time, let me share with you that, uh, UUM is still learning in, in, in terms of setting up the KPIs, the strategy and things like that. I remember in, uh, when we, we had our first strategic plan um they gave us like the faculty we have like almost 100 kpis there's too many to me i said that is wrong but i cannot change it at, at the uh university level so i went to meet the, the the vice chancellor i said that um you want me to bring graduate school as one of the best to get this accreditation you know things like that so I told him that in order to do that, we only need 30 KPIs, not 100. So I told him that I'm going to focus on these 30 KPIs. I'm going to ignore that 70. If you don't agree with that, I will step down. Because there's no way that we can focus on, we do 100 and, and while at the same time trying to do this. Uh, so yeah, the, v, the VC at that time agreed with me. But every time we have majlis quality, banyak yang our school punya faculty punya ni akan kosong. Because we don't do anything about it. Yeah. So people uh, condemn us, me, things like that. I just ignore that. Because I know that by, by focusing on what we need to do, we can achieve it in, in a short time. And when we start delivering, people will shut up. They, they have no points to, to, to shoot at you anymore. Sama juga dengan, you know, uh, when I came to UMK, let me share a little, a little bit with you. The other hukum alam. Mm -hmm. If you talk to Tansri Idris Jusso, he will he will tell you about hukum alam. Hukum alam ni ialah kita kena menerima hakikat. We have to, to, to accept the fact that there are some clever people, less clever people. They are nice people, kind people. They are bad people who always disagree with whatever that you want to do. And, and, and that is hukum. That, that, that is life. Yeah. And if you look at, and there's one theory. They call it as deficient innovation theory. Mm -hmm. Okay. That deficient innovation theory is like a bell curve theory. Okay. There's only 2.5% of the people in any organization that are innovators mm -hmm. who can see what others cannot see. Now, only only 2.5. If you have 100 people, two or three orang saja that can think, that, that can see things. So they, they will always come up with these crazy ideas. Yeah. And then you will have another 13.5%. Um, they call it as the, Allah, I can't remember that group. You know, what you need to do, if you are a leader, is that to convince this 13.5%. So 13.5 plus 2.5, you got 16%. Mm -hmm. And that 16% is called as the, um, we call it as the, apa dia panggil, Allah Akbar. Saya tak ingat, but that, you only need that 16% mm -hmm. to push things through. Yeah. Because the rest, another sixteen percent, they just follow. They, they just follow. Another sixteen percent lagi, they akan ah, they atas pagar dia tunggu je. Ah, they they will follow you, but towards the end. Mm. And there's another, uh, I think another sixteen percent that will always go against you. Whoever the leader, who, whatever that they want to do, they always say no. Mm. So, to me. 
you know, uh, using that that theory, that approach, that's how we transform the MK. Orang baru dari luar datang nak bawa perubahan, the brain change. So we just, I just created a small group, thinkers. And then we get another smaller group, uh, slightly bigger, to support us. And then we created the quick wins. Yeah. That quick wins, the, the quick delivery, will shut those um, noises, you know. And more people will come and support you. Yeah. And that, that's how we do things. You try to read uh, deficient innovation theory and try to relate to the real life. And then if you can try to really try to understand it, then you will understand. You have to accept the fact that hey, there's some noises, they will always be there. Yeah. You know them. But you must have the confidence within you, the self-belief that this is the best thing, the right things to do at that particular time. You might be wrong later, but yeah. your intention is, is, is very important. I don't care. You know, masa saya, uh, there are many, many challenges at UMK. Whenever I'm forced to do things that I'm not supposed to do, I don't care whether you are the minister or, mm. or what, I won't do it. Because my conscience is very, very clear. I'm not afraid of you, I'm afraid of God. Mm. At the end of the day, why we do things? Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, I think I have to say it here that why we are praying like five times a day, we fast, and we do all those things. But still, we are so afraid of the human. Mm -mm. We are so afraid. Kita takut kita nanti, oh, aku nak naik pangkat susah. Mm -hmm. I think, I, I don't understand that. Why, why we are so afraid of other human beings? We are supposed to be afraid of, of the Almighty. That is the only one. Because the risky is, is from Allah. If it's yours, then it will be yours. Yeah. Nobody can say no to that, you know. So, itu sajalah. I think... Great, Prof. So, your uh, our take-home point for today is lead your own life. Yeah. Right? You know what people are saying about you if you're, you think you are doing the right thing, right? If, if you want to please people, let, let me tell you, honestly, you know, uh, because I went through this turbulence and everything, you know, uh, if you rely on people, they will take care of you when they have something that they can get from you. You know, bila saya ditamatkan sebagai VC, yeah, let me tell you honestly, uh, on the last day, I call everyone, all the, the management, the deans, directors, they look very sad, they pity on me, you know, and I said, no, you don't have to do it. Because it's my choice. I take full responsibility and I'm proud of myself. And I, and I told them that one thing, you don't have to be sad because I can guarantee you that most of you will forget me within one week. And a small number of you will forget me after one month. Majority of you. Jadi, saya dah, dah, I know that, you know, when you are nobody after that, you have to accept the fact. And it's not easy. You know, you have to come back to the office every day after that. If you are not strong mentally, I can tell you, it's going to be other VC yang akan, you know, stress, the former VC akan stress, ada yang sampai kena stroke dan sebagainya. But that, that is why you have to maintain your humbleness when you are in power. You can disagree, you know, say no, because we, if you have to say no, stick to your principle, but never be arrogant. Masa saya visi, saya baik dengan semua penyapu sampah, dengan Pak Gad. Saya tak benarkan dia orang tabik saya semua. Ramai orang suka kan, dia orang tabik, saya bangga kan. I, I didn't allow them to, to tabik whatever. And now I'm okay with them. Some people may ignore, but I, I can still have, make a friend with the 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 pachi pachi tukar sapu, pak gad. They are, you know they, So life is 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 like that. So that the key point never rely on other human being. Yeah. We rely on on, on the one. Yeah. Stay yeah. Right. Mm -mm. 
Okay, so we have a next question is from uh, PM Dr. Aida. So, uh, could you please uh, give uh, us a wise advice to all the new and young lecturers, uh, particularly uh, on the part of motivation, lah, uh, Prof? Motivation for the new and young lecturers. Wise advice. I think, th thank you for the question because um, that one of the things that I want to share with you, but I forget. We don't need motivation in life. Mm. We don't need motivation from others. I don't. I, I never believe in that. Motivation comes from within. From it comes from you. Mm -hmm. Only you can motivate yourself, not others. You know, if you like to attend motivational talks, stop attending that. You are wasting your time mm -hmm. because you need to create your own motivation. You need the drive must come from within, from you. You know, let me share with you. I actually I said, saya seorang yang sangat. I I have this low confidence. I have this. Um, I cannot talk basically. That's why I don't want to be an academic in the first place. I'm I'm not a good speaker. I, I, um, but I know that I have many ideas. You know, um, jadinya kita kan. It came to me that you know I I was so scared to talk, but even though I know that I I I can propose something better, I can do things better. So one day I said, if this going on like that, then those who are not qualified, who are not good enough, will be the leaders. Mm. So I said, I have to do something, yeah. you know, I, then I, I start pushing myself to write, to talk, to read. Mm -hmm. um, and over the years, um, you know, you, you, you without you realizing it, you becomes better. I remember that masa tu tahun berapa, I was a dean at that time and the KSU came, minister came. I asked question. I was shaking. And then once professor, he's an emeritus professor. After that session, he came to me. You know what, Azizi? I've been observing you for the past 10 plus years. You have improved a lot. Yeah. Yeah, got and then I still remember Arwah Professor Zakaria. He's, he's like another of my sifu. Peringkat awal. Bila you... you Berikan awal, you nak belajar, nak bercakap ni. You kadang-kadang, you, you, you don't know how to arrange mm. the, the sentence, the word, how, the words that to choose, that you need to choose, the sentence that you need to to to, to speak, you know, to use, things like that. And, and your facial expression also probably not pleasing. Mm. Yeah, sebab you, you ngelabah kan? Yeah. And then he said that, as you see, Habis tu dia tepuk saya, dia peluk saya, dia kata, Z, let me tell you something. I think you have the most wonderful ideas compared to others. But learn to say things with a smile. Mm -hmm. Calm down, you know, talk slowly and give a smile. People will appreciate that. So, daripada situ, then I said, wow. You know, dulu saya ada satu buku, li buku tiga lima. Everyone knows that book Tigalima, right? A small notebook. Um, how I learned to speak, you know, I, I, I always observe a few people whom I consider as a great speaker. How they talk, the tone that they use, the word that they use. So I can in dalam kunota tersebut. And I'll try to repeat what they, 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 they use. But over the years, I'm still not a good speaker, but saya tak takut lagi lah. Yeah. You know, datanglah menteri ke siapa ke, you know, I will stand up and just speak up. And and you have to go through the nightmare. Let me tell you something. First time saya keluar live dalam Astro Awani. Why saya kat rumah tu balik dia cakap, kesian tengok lelaki aku muka mengelabah kan. It was live. First time. But you you when you went through that nightmare, you want to forget it. Yeah. But 
after that you become a, di a different person yeah, you, you, are, you are no longer afraid of anything you know lepas tu saya entah berapa puluh dah saya dah keluar TV especially masa kat KPT mm. masa tu KP pun takut nak keluar TV to be honest selalu yeah. saya kena TKP kena kan but it's a blessing in disguise mm. you just take the challenge you motivate yourself I can do it you know whatever your weaknesses work hard overcome that overcome that fear overcome whatever negative feelings that you have because only you that can change you yeah. not others yeah. Panjang ya, Panda. <laughs> true, bro. Very true. All of yeah. us agree with you. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you, bro, for that. So, I think uh, this is the second last question from Puan Nurul Ifa. So, in the very beginning of the session, uh, Prof did mention about you are an introvert. So, uh, Nurul Ifa asked, um, how do you convert this introvert personality uh, into a, a good leader? How do you become a good leader even though you are an, an introvert? Um, because you have a purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, much as I explained just now that you have a purpose, the higher purpose, you want to see change. In order to do that, you must have certain qualities. Kalau you pemalu, you cannot be shy anymore. Kalau you yang pendiam, you have to speak up. You have no because I, I still remember there's another sifu who said that I see, if you don't say it, nobody understand what's in your mind. Yeah. Learn and you say it. So I started saying it, but then someone else said that say it with a smile. You know, you learn through that process. Tapi niatnya because you want to do something. You want to do a, a something that you believe is is a good one, a better one. Not for yourself. You know, you don't do it for yourself. Um, sebab itu kita, when you have a bigger purpose, then, then that will drive you to change. Tapi saya masih lagi, I'm, I'm still an introvert in a way. Bila saya seorang, saya suka pergi airport seorang-seorang. Mm. Saya suka pergi awal. I always carry book with me. All the time. It's okay for me. Kalau pergi airport, dua jam awal, I, I'm okay. Saya boleh duduk seorang-seorang, I can read books. Mm -hmm. Kalau flight delay pun, saya tak marah sangat. I can read books. Um, I can have breakfast alone. That's me because I use that time to think. You know, and and and... Saya tak suka sangat kedai kopi ni, jarang lah. I mean, once in a while with good friends, I go out. But in my phone, mm -hmm. I have hundreds of notes. Saya ni orang yang suka fikir. Whenever I have something, ideas, I will put it in my notes. In my phone. I will write it down. And kadang-kadang ideas tu akan berkembang, -kembang, -kembang. it became one article. Mm -hmm. Saya banyak menulis dalam popular professional journal juga. Macam sekarang ni, last year I wrote, last two years, I think more than 10 articles in marketing in Indonesia and also 300. There's a professional online magazine where I, I throw out my ideas, you know, sharing. Tapi bila you menulis, you kena terima hakikat, ada yang setuju, ada yang tak setuju. Yeah. You must be ready for that. If people disagree with you, it's fine. Jangan melompat. Ignore them. They have the right to disagree, as you have the right to say what you believe is right. So, saya rasa itu je lah. You, you must have the, the higher purpose. Hmm. Macam sekarang ni pun contohnya lah. I mean, I, I, I receive a couple of offers, a good of good ones to lead institution. Not academic, ada yang one academic, one non academic. It goes back to oh, oh. kebanyak sebab dia macam ni ya. Eh? Ramai orang kenal saya as a bulldozer transformer. So they, they want to give me tough job for transformation job to transform a company agency. But to me, it's not about power and position. What's the big purpose of it? If I don't see that, I won't take it. It's not about money. Tuhan dah bagi cukup dah saya, you know, 
untuk untuk hidup yang saya nak pencen I plan to pencen awal because uh, unless I, I I can find a big purpose for me to continue if I don't see that then I I I will just you know uh, pencen and and do something else and now I'm 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 helping uh, a couple of startup companies um other than training consultation and that startup companies I don't charge anything mm. I just do it for free out of my patient Dia senang saja jika budak-budak Melayu ni especially the Malays that really want to do something uh, wonderful I say you don't have to pay me anything I can help you connect you with this uh, agency CEO yang saya kenal but one day if you feel when you are successful you feel that you want to give me something then I will take it at that time but not now I I'm, I'm just doing it because I feel that I that is the right thing to do. So that is that is life, man. Itu saja lah. <laughs> right, bro. I think this is the last question, bro. Bro, yeah. boleh kongsikan dengan kita um, cara seimbangkan kehendak organisasi KPI dan hmm. juga keperluan industri. Uh, bagi bagi pencerah pencerah muda ni lah. How do how do you balance between your KPI and industrial needs? Yelah, um, macam mana nak cakap? Eh? Uh, first, the first thing is 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 you need to learn about time management. Mm. Um, so so the UMK, you know, um, you know, how do you interact with these corporate people? Is that um. Simple example. Uh, uh, when I first joined UMK, uh, I have I met saya ni buat apa ni lawatan to these faculties. So one faculty I went to the faculty of entrepreneurship. So faculty of entrepreneurship and business. So so we have like I think thirty lecturers who are in the entrepreneurship punya discipline. So I ask them simple question. In your phone. I said, can can you look into your phone? I said, Daniel, how many entrepreneurs contact that you have in your phone that you can call them at any time? Mm -hmm. I mean, they are close to you. Most of them, they don't have that. Mm -hmm. Jadinya, kalau kita mengajar keusahawanan, tapi kita tidak mengenali pun, so orang usahawan pun di luar how you going to teach your entrepreneurship to your student same question now i'm going to ask you how many accountants out there who are working in the industry sama ada dalam audit accounting in the, you know profession or mncs glcs that you have in your phone that you can call them to have a, a chat over coffee coffee over chat uh, whatever you know, kalau you tak ada, I mean, you are not relevant. Mm -hmm. you, so you, you need to start engaging with them on a small scale. You can, jadi, and, and some, it won't come to you. They won't come to you. You have to seek that out. So, saya, sekarang ni saya, saya bukan DC lah. Uh, you, you know that, that Kita ada khazanah mega trend every year. Mm. So, khazanah mega trend ni dia hanya uh, jemput um, managing director, CEO or chairman of companies, of big companies. Kadang-kadang dia jemput vice chancellor. Tapi masa saya dekan saya dah dapat jemputan. Sekarang saya saya dah bukan VC pun saya masih dapat jemputan. Sampai sekarang. It's more than 10 years. It's true networking. Saya kenal orang di Hazanah yang yang buat jemputan kepada saya. So I, I got the, this exposure to 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 meet this top corporate people, corporate leaders. Sama juga dulu uh, Maju Holding dia every year they organize um, World Competitiveness Index Forum. But IMD akan keluarkan World Competitiveness Index every year. So they have the forum in Kuala Lumpur where they invite all these chairman, managing director, CEO. And oftentimes, I'm the only academician in that forum. 
but you have to know go out and and know someone because I know the group CEO of the Maju Holding. And jadinya, you start with a small group, tiga empat orang, kawan-kawan universiti pun tak apa yang dulu yang sekarang kerja kat sana, have a coffee with them, visit them, and from there it will spread. It will spread. You know, and I have one thing, uh, secret that maybe I can share with you that I have been writing in LinkedIn since 2011. Ah, jadinya LinkedIn is the most powerful professional networking. But you have to learn how to write. Not You don't write like you're writing an academic things. How they want to share to get the attention of the corporate people. You know, uh, if, if that, that that is one one simple way if you want to create a, a corporate network. Saya ada lebih kurang sembilan ribu follower, mostly uh, corporate people. Um, because I've been doing that for a long time, and I always spend time. Uh, you know, try to post as frequent as possible, at least bulan sekali. Kadang-kadang gajian tu adalah dua tiga kali direct, kemudian hilang. But you know, you must do it consistently. So because dia sebenarnya kalau kita manage time properly, kita boleh buat. Hmm. Saya bagi tahu you, saya tak pernah kerja sampai malam tau. I know. Masa saya dekan, saya TNC, saya VC sekalipun, saya jarang kerja sampai malam. Masa saya VC, walaupun kita transform UMK, saya kerja lima setengah saya balik. Kerja hmm. lima saya balik. TNC pun sama. Kecuali once in a while when there is uh, an urgent need, mm -hmm. then you you have to stay back. You stay back lah. But on average, I just the office normal time, balik normal time. Yeah. Manage your. Kecuali dulu lah yang saya cerita masa saya gila sikit lah. Saya kena darah tinggi lah sebab lepas tu. Nanti <laughs> you all kena kena balance juga work life balance. Eh? Masa saya buat kerja dengan SAS. Sebab so, I have to spend like two or three hours at night working on this software. Uh, masa tu dia stressful sikit. Saya pemuda sangat, terlebih semangat. I don't know how to manage my time. Uh, at that time, masa tu 2005-2008. And then kita seronok sangat masa tu. Whenever I go out and engage with SAS, uh, saya dapat kedebuk duit banyak kan. Uh, masa tu kalau you pergi tiga hari, dapat sepuluh ribu, that's big money. Allah. Uh, masa tu, that was in 2005-2006-2008 uh jadi dia menyebabkan you you lari sikit lah uh, but learn how to how, how to manage your time because i i have proven that you don't need to work extra pun mm -hmm. uh, just, just kpi pun janganlah nak kerja nak tulis banyak-banyak yes you plan for one or two every year mm -hmm. nak jadi profesor muda sangat dia umur 30 tahun muda kalut jadi profesor ni that make you stress mm -hmm. They make you stress. I mean, you know, but if you publish consistently, satu, dua setiap tahun, mm -hmm. then naturally you will get it. You will get it. Don't, 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 don't push your heart, yourself too hard. Sebab mm -hmm. akhirnya rezeki Tuhan juga nak bagi. Hmm. Yeah, all right. So, all right. So, thank you so much for, for, for the inspiring uh, sharing. Um, all right, so to all participants, uh, so just want to inform you that the uh, Google form link for e -cert and also program feedback is provided in the chat box. Yeah. All right, so I think uh, we are almost um, towards the end of our session. Okay, that's normal question. So I think before I wrap uh, our today's session, so probably we can have a photo session. Uh, and I will encourage uh, all of you to uh, turn on your camera, please. And the, hmm, muka. <laughs> and the committee will, will snap a picture. Sekejap, ya. Uh, siapa? Uh, Zurina. Boleh, Zurina? Okay, so, few minutes lah. Ada yang nak buka lagi tu? Okay, okay, okay. Kita tunggu sekejap boleh. Saya ambil jugalah sambil-sambil ya. Oh, ada Kak Nisa. Ada yang introvert ni. Pemalu. Ah. 
mereka di sini pro cuma menutup saja. <laughs> Kejap eh. Uh, Zu boleh Zu? Okay, saya ambil juga eh sambil-sambil eh. Satu, dua, tiga. Alright. Okay. Okay. Yang pun ada tu. Sorry pro? Nampak ada unit 10 lah. Apa ni? Ada. Ada Dr. Azlin. Right? Uh, Dr. Azlin. Uh -huh. So we also have our friend from UITM Merbuk kita also. Okay. Uh, so, most of us are basically from uh, Puncak Alam lah. Okay. okay. Anak saya pun UITM juga tapi nak graduate dah. Oh UITM mana Prof? UITM mana? Ya, Puncak Alam kot. Oh punca alam. Yang ada alam alam ni, Syah Alam, punca alam, ada lagi tak? Alam, alam ni Syah Alam, punca alam betul bro. Ah, punca alam lah tu. Okay. Eh, jauh sikit tu kan? Uh -uh. Ah. Okay, so everyone, so we have basically come to the end of our webinar. So a big thank you to our speaker, okay, Professor Datuk Dr. Nur Azizi Ismail for a very good sharing on the uh, research and also the academic uh, field. And thank you also to all our lecturers and the participants for being part of this inspiring virtual event. So it is hopeful that uh, this event will become a stepping stone that will enrich our academic and personal journey. So uh, we will actually have uh, one more session. Um, I think on, on uh, when uh, Dr. Shuhada, 26 is it? 26. Uh, 23rd, sorry. So, uh, looking forward to seeing uh, all of you at the, at uh, our future events. So, uh, I wish you a great uh, year, a week ahead. And with that, uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Prof, Prof and everyone. And Assalamualaikum. Nanti tapis, eh. Pilih yang baik-baik saja yang saya cakap tu. InsyaAllah, Prof. Baik tu buang ke tepi. Alright. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Terima kasih, Prof. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Semua so, mohon isi link ya semua.